Hi there and welcome to another week of a grid design every week. My name is Cindy Seitz Krug and my website is quintessentialquilting.com. So I hope you'll check that out. Um, today we're going to do a little stitch that I've just called the four leaf clover for lack of a better name. Again, like I told you, sometimes it's harder to name these stitches than actually to stitch them out. So um, I just give them a name of what they remind me of. It's not necessarily their real name, it's just what I call them. So this one I've called Four Leaf Clover because that's what it looks like. So come on over and I'll show you how to do it. All right, first I wanna show you, get those out of there. Um, this is how the stitch looks on patchwork. So um, it's just, it's like a scalloped type of, um, scallop stitching but so each side goes on one side of the line and then the other so you alternate but um, you get this four leaf clover pattern I think it looks a lot better on patchwork than it does just on plain fabric but I'm going to show you plain fabric um, let me open this up and you can see the back so see when you look at the back it's kind of boring but on the patchwork itself it looks very pretty especially with that gold metallic thread so I'll show you how to do that very simple. Thanks, Cameron. All right. Again, I'm practicing on one of um, Margaret Solomon Gunn's um, practice um, fabrics. Um, she came up with this for her class, and, and it's very it's very nice. It's a great way to practice. All right. So if you see her um, little stitches written there that's not what I'm following but if you ever take a class from Margaret chances are you'll use one of these panels all right so we're going to start um, inside of the edge just so that I don't confuse you I'm going to do all of my vertical lines first and all of the horizontal lines second so this one we're just going to do two little bumps or scallops per grid line and I've done that on the left side of that grid line now I'm going to cross over and do the same thing on the other side of the grid line so at every intersection of the grid lines you cross over and do your two little scallops and try to keep them consistent in size as always consistency um, makes these look better. If you ever notice in home decor there are a lot of grid designs and um, they're perfectly um, they're just perfect and that's because they're done on a machine but um, when we're stitching out grids we're not machines so we can't make them perfect but we can do the best we can and then they turn out very pretty. So up here what I want to um, point out Every grid box, like for instance this one here, all of these scallops will be on the outside of that box. And in the next grid box, all of the scallops will be on the inside. So up here, I need to make my little scallops on the inside of the box. But as I start going down, again, on the inside, now we're gonna go on the outside. Oh my gosh, I just ran out. Sorry, Cameron. <laughs> I ran out of bobbin thread. So, the question is, do we keep rolling with the film while I put in a new bobbin? Let's try that. We've never had that, have we, Cam? No. All right, let's see. I think I'm just going to have to go with any old color. I'll go with gold. And uh, we will carry on. I don't think we can do that. You don't think I can do that? I hate doing retakes. So if there's any boo-boos in my videos, you guys just have to um, forgive me because I don't like to do retakes. you got to take them as they are. All right, we got that new bobbin in there pretty quickly, so that's good. I'm going to start up here. We've got gold bobbin thread. Lock off my stitches. Boy, that was, I really should have started over. I'm very unprofessional. All right, and I see a little bobbin thread hanging up there that I don't like. 
and get rid of that. All right, we're ready. Rock and roll. Okay, continuing that scallop. So, basically, um, remember we talked about mirror image in some of our other stitches? That's what we're doing here, the mirror image. I remember on our apple core design, we did mirror images. That's what we're doing here. But you need to remember when you're traveling along the bottom or top edge to keep all of your um, scallops either inside the block you're working in or outside. So this one, they're all going to be inside. Again, just like that block over there, we're going to keep all of these on the inside. I've got my heater running over in the corner. Hope you guys can't hear that too much, but it's very cold out now. And my sewing room feels like an ice box. The fireplace heat doesn't quite reach in here. Okay. Three more rows. Okay. Yep. I'm not gonna do the um, the edges out here. No, well, maybe I will just so I can get down to it. Okay, we are on our first horizontal row. So, which side am I going to do my um, scallops on? Well, if I go on this side, that's going to totally mess up my design. I need to keep them inside there for this block, and then go outside on that block. Now you see the four-leaf clover showing up. As with most of these designs, you don't really get the full effect until you start doing the um, opposite rows. And the way I tend to work is I do my vertical rows first and then my horizontal rows second. It really doesn't matter. Just pick one and go with it. But you don't want to do a horizontal and then a vertical usually because um, unless you're really sharp and on the ball, you might get confused. together pretty quickly. This is a fast one. When we progress um, into the year later on, I'll show you some more difficult ones. I'm trying to keep these pretty easy for now, but they will get a little more difficult as we progress. A little more challenging. this off and I think that's it because we're at the edge of our space so we don't need to do that four leaf clover all right let me cut those threads and there you go you can see that that's a simple but pretty design and like I said I really think it looks beautiful on patchwork more so than this we'll look at the back and um, it just looks like four leaf clovers so there it is that's that's it I hope you like that one 
easy, pretty, and I'm sure you can find a place for it in one of your patchwork quilts. It'll look beautiful. So thanks for joining me today. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't forget my book, The Grid Design Workbook. It's available at my website, um, quintessentialquilting.com, or from AmericanQuilter.com, or Amazon, or any of those places. So I hope you'll check it out. It's got lots of different grid designs with hand drawn instructions, step by step directions, tips to make your um, stitches more beautiful and successful. So check it out and join me next week for another grid design. Thanks. Bye.